So here are some questions now. The first question, blood returning to the heart from the systemic circuit first enters the... Well, you got to think, what is the systemic circuit? It's not the pulmonary circuit. Pulmonary means lungs. So systemic means the body. So you could pause this video and think about it before you see the answer. But you go back to your drawing and it's blood coming back from the body. So coming back from the body, we're going to go here, superior, inferior, uh, vena cava, and then to the right atrium. Let's see if there's one of those things available. Okay, well, we don't see a superior or an inferior vena cava, but we do see the right atrium. So it's going to be that one. Okay, the second question. The right ventricle pumps blood to, look at your choices here, uh, you see some structures uh, just to keep in mind. Again, you can pause this and think about it and go back to your diagram and look before you see the answer. But we go back to the diagram of the right ventricle and it's pumping out, it's going out the right SL valve and over to the lung. So let's see if one of those choices is back in that question. As well, I just want to note here that there are valves between the chambers. So when you're going from atria to ventricle, you cross a valve. And then when you're leaving the ventricles, there's a valve. But there isn't a valve when you enter the heart. So in between rooms or chambers, you have valves. And then when you leave the chambers or the rooms, you have valves. So let's go back here to number two. And you will see here, <coughs> excuse me, you would see here the lungs, the right and the left lungs. Let's do two more questions. Blood flowing into the heart from the vena cavi flows next through the what valve? So blood flowing into the heart. So we're going to go in the heart. We're going to be coming back on either vena cava. So what's it next going to go through? So we look at the choices. We see a bunch of valves. So we're going to see what's the first valve that we're going to hit. Again, go back to your diagram. Okay, here's the vena cava. It's coming back here. Okay, we didn't hit a valve when we came in. Remember, when you go in, you don't hit a valve. But the next valve we're going to hit here is the right AV. So let's go to our choices. Again, pause this so you can think about it. We don't see the right AV, so you got to remember, what's the right AV? Is it bicuspid? Is it tricuspid? Is it mitral? Well, by my, those are the same thing, so you cross those out. It's not a semi-lunar, it's an AV, so you could get tricuspid, or you can remember right side, right triangle, so it's going to be a tricuspid. One more question. The something valve prevents backward flow into the left atrium. The something valve prevents backward flow into the left atrium. So let's go back to our diagram. All right, well, we need a valve, and it has to be between the atrium and then the ventricles. So it's got to be this valve. It's preventing the backflow. Because remember, these valves are one way, so it's got to go down this way. If it goes back, it's regurgitation, and you get heart murmurs. So this is the valve we're looking for, the left AV. But we know there could be other choices. So let's go and look at what we have here. We have bicuspid, we have tricuspid, semilunar. Well, we said the right is the tri, so the left is going to be the bi or the mitral. Mitral's not up there, so it's going to be the bicuspid valve. And that's it for level four, and that should definitely help you with answers in a test in terms of blood flow, which way the blood is going to go through next, and which valves. Also, you could ask more questions in terms, if we go back and look at the diagram here, we can go back and ask, well, which one's oxygen poor, which one's oxygen rich, but you got to reason it out. If you went to the lungs, you picked up oxygen, and you don't really lose a lot of it until you hit the body tissues and cells, so then it becomes poor after that. So the next part here, I made a space because, again, you can answer questions dealing with the physiology here. Level 5 is dealing more of the anatomy, taking this diagram that we did and connecting it to the diagram of the heart. Alright, so let's go on to level 5 and compare the diagram that we drew to a real life diagram of the heart. So we're going to take this diagram I'm going to put it side by side by the real diagram until you're able to learn the real diagram and label it. And one thing is do what we did in the beginning. Start with labeling the chambers. Well, you see right atrium and below it is right ventricle. Go over to the other side, right atrium, there's our right ventricle. Again, go back, left atrium, left ventricle. Over in the diagram of the heart, 
left atrium, well that is a left ventricle, and you can see the arrows going down on both sides from atrium to ventricle, just like we have over here in our diagram, and it's going to cross the AV valves. The AV valves on each side are these parachute looking structures right here in white, and then the other one over there. So it's going to go down and through those valves. Now what changes here is if you see in the diagram that we drew, we drew that the blood's coming out of the side of the heart, but it doesn't come out of the side of the heart. If you notice, once it goes into the ventricle, it actually goes up diagonal underneath the pulmonary trunk and up and out of the aorta. So it actually goes up and out that way. If you want, you can start drawing your lines that way. It's personal preference at this point. So it goes up, out to the rest of the body. When it comes back to the body, as you notice here, it comes back on the superior and inferior vena cava. Well, you need a superior, which means up, and an inferior, which means down. We could say this arrow is the up one. We could maybe add another arrow right here and say that's the bottom one, so superior and inferior uh, vena cava, which would be these structures right here. And you know it's them because they're leading back into the right atrium. Right atrium, we cross the right AV valve, also known as the tricuspid valve. And then going back to our diagram, we're drawing it coming out of the side of the heart, but there's nothing coming out of the side of the heart. Just like the other ventricle, it goes up and diagonal out the pulmonary trunk and then branches to your pulmonary arteries going to your lungs, just like we drew here. Pulmonary trunk, then pulmonary arteries to the lungs, and that's going to be coming back on the pulmonary veins, and they're red because they're oxygen rich, even though they are veins, and back to the left atrium, and starting over again. And you can see your pulmonic valve over here, because when you leave the ventricle, you're going to cross a valve, just like we drew over on this side, you leave the ventricle, you're going to cross a valve. The aortic one is usually hidden in many diagrams. There's a little piece of it down right in there that they're labeling. Some diagrams move it a little bit so you can see it better and they put it uh, right up in here. But that's pretty much the final level here and that should help you when you're in a lab and you have to label the actual diagram of the heart. And if you want, there's good videos that you can watch here. And I just took this off of a real nice one on YouTube. So I'll let you watch it and hopefully it makes sense now. The heart is a pump which must circulate blood through two different but interconnected vascular systems. The smaller of these systems is the pulmonary system. Blood returning from the upper part of the body is delivered to the right atrium of the heart by the superior vena cava, one of the body's two largest veins, while blood returning from the lower part of the body is delivered to the right atrium by the other major vein, the inferior vena cava. Contraction of the right atrium in each cardiac cycle forces blood into the right ventricle. This is followed by contraction of the right ventricle, which pumps blood into the pulmonary artery, sending it on through the blood vessels of the lungs. As the right ventricle contracts and pressure within the right ventricle rises, the tricuspid valve situated at the opening between the right atrium and right ventricle shuts, preventing any backflow. The pressure generated by contraction of the right ventricle soon opens the pulmonary valve and blood enters the circulation of the lungs. After passing through the circulation of the lungs, the blood, having been recharged with oxygen and having rid itself of carbon dioxide, is returned through the pulmonary veins to the left atrium. The left atrium, too, contracts, forwarding blood into the left ventricle in order to fill it before it contracts. As the powerful left ventricle contracts, the mitral valve shuts, preventing backflow into the left atrium. The aortic valve opens and blood is forced into the aorta, which distributes it to the rest of the body apart from the lungs. As the contraction comes to an end and pressure in the aorta falls, the aortic valve snaps shut to prevent backflow. So hopefully this video ventricle. helps in this uh, animation. So what you want to do is maybe when you watch these videos is to slow them up. Go back, start in the right atrium, put it in your mind, see that diagram in your mind, from the right atrium, what are we going to go into next? Well, from atrium into ventricle, etc.